Yo, 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 it's just so if you ain't know, and this is what's the word. For the last topic of our relationship series, we're gonna be talking about vetting um, and kind of just like deep diving and see what, what makes a friendship, what makes a, you know, a partner. And yeah, we're gonna get right into it like always. Um, again, vetting with y'all, any of y'all that have been in relationships or partnerships right now, like what would y'all say about it? Yeah, I mean, just to kickstart, I mean, I think in terms of vetting, uh, whether it be romantically or whether it be in terms of a friendship, I feel like it's very, very important. Um, kind of like knowing the, the, the person that you're going to move with, understanding the person that you're going to move with as well. You know what I'm saying? Um, kind of goes back to also what we spoke about before in terms of self-awareness. Yeah. You know, like what do you need? You know what I'm saying? Like uh, from my personal experience, um, I, I knew that I needed someone that was different to me. Yeah. Um, and, and that was what I preferred mm-hmm. and that's what I wanted. You know, I wanted someone that's a bit, that was, um, I'm a, uh, I don't want to, I don't know if I'm a quiet person. I don't f- think I'm a quiet person, but I wanted someone who was a bit more um, outgoing and, and, and showed me how to enjoy life. I'm, I'm quite boring. You know what I'm saying? But I wanted someone who could, you know, show me how to enjoy, enjoy certain things. And I yeah. feel like that's like very, very important. You know what I'm saying? Even in terms of my friendships, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm, I'm very picky when it comes to friends. Mm. You know, I don't want, like I, like, I don't want to kind of sound naive when I say this, but I don't want, I don't want friends that don't really have nothing going. Mm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I don't want to, I don't want friends that, that can't add anything to me. Cause yeah. to me, that is just not, it's kind of a waste of my time. Do yeah, you get yeah. what I'm saying? So I feel like vetting and understanding those things. Um, I do consider myself to be a very principled person. Yeah. So, you know, if I, I, if I see things, you know, that I don't like, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm ready to kind of, you know, <laughs> no, I'm joking. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like I, I like it all boils down to like when you're in the vetting process. I don't think you can be don't be uh, sentimental with your life. Yeah, because your relationships all can alter your life. Yeah. So yeah. think about it. So if you're being sentimental with your relationships, you're being sentimental with your life. Yeah. Then, you know, we all have. We, you know, we, I'm sure we all want to be great. We all want to do good things and stuff like that. So it's like. You know, why do I need to compromise on my relationships, whether yeah. that romantically or in our friendship? So, yeah. 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 I think I, I like what you said in terms of like um, surrounding yourself. Or I'll, I'll just speak for myself. Just when I vet people, like I, I'm drawn to people who I admire, who I want to learn something from, who inspire me, you know, um, I don't think that I, you know, would rush to be in a relationship with somebody that I don't think I can learn from or that I don't think they can teach me anything, you know. So I I think I made a lot of mistakes when I was younger in that sense with, you know, just finding somebody who had similar um, hobbies, like, you know, because I sing, I'm like, oh, maybe I should just be with a musician, you know. (laughs) Um, But then I, I, I realized, you know, as I grew older, you know, that they're more important things, you know, so I I, I need to find someone or I need to be with somebody who I'm like, I like this thing this person does. I don't know how to do that, but I want this person to teach me this. I want to spend, you know, um, more time with this person so that they can rub off on me, you know, so yeah. Yeah, that's good. I think there needs to be like a balance of both uh, when vetting because like, You need some people who are like-minded, truly, um, because you need to relate and you can rub minds and Mm -hmm. and there are sometimes you just need certain validations from people who get it, who are like you in this way. Um, And then there are the people who are different. So for me, I'm really like drawn to people who, uh, like I just love when people like just really don't care about anything. Like Mm -hmm. there's something so beautiful about that and it's not like I live a life very rigid, like, oh, everybody's looking at me, okay. But like, there's a certain positioning that I like to operate in. Mm-hmm. And so when people really just say whatever and do whatever, I think that's so amazing. Mm-hmm. So like, if you look at like my ecosystem, <laughs> there's a handful of them that are very, just <laughs> how, however they are, however they are, but I love that. So I think when vetting, you gotta kind of look at what you have and what you need, because sometimes mm-hmm. if someone is similar, um, the, the, the similarness of what they bring sometimes is too much with what you already have. Yes. And then when people are different, sometimes like how different it mm. is, like is too much 
to add to what you actually need. Yeah. Um, so yeah, vetting is, it, it's very interesting. But again, back to what she said about self-awareness, you need to know what you need. Yeah. Um, so like I have a round table of friends in my brain. So I feel like I'm at a table and there are a whole bunch of chairs. Yeah. Each chair is here for a reason, but like, yeah. I have a seat for the person who feeds me spiritually, who gets me mentally, emotionally, who like, we have the same eyeballs and brain, like connected in this way. But there's a person who's also at this table who, they don't really give me anything spiritually, they don't really give me too much, like we don't think about life the same, but they're such a positive person. Yeah. And I need that because I can be glass half empty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this person glass full, I need you, yeah. but of course there are fundamentals, like I can trust you, like yeah, there's respect, course, but yeah. I think when you vet, you gotta see what the open pockets are and what you have room for. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie yet, that was, mm -hmm. that was good. I think um, my vetting process, what I've come to understand is like, as I've gotten older and different stages of life, it kind of changed a little bit. Um, obviously when I was younger, I don't know if there was necessarily a vetting process, like, oh, like, I mean, we like, same sports, whatever, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, what's good, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, but like, even in college, like, freshman year, sophomore year, I would say I'm the same. Junior year, senior year, I'm like, different. So I feel like someone that could have been my friend through vent vetting, freshman, sophomore year, they may not be my friend, like, yeah. junior, because yeah. of like, what I lacked, what mm -hmm. I needed. Yeah. And um, I think, yeah, the older you get, you kind of start to realize, like, okay, like, I, there's no way I'm gonna be 100% in, in everything. Yeah. Like yeah, people right. feed and feel, feel where they need to be, um, where you need them to be. So I think for my process now is more so like, I'm very big on people that are very, like are optimist. Like yeah. I yeah. think like I'm someone that has faith, bro. If you don't have faith, leave me alone, bro. Yeah. Cause I generally think like anything is possible. I, mm. I, I that's just me. And I think that part of it is just growing up, my mom, that's just how she is. But like, so when people are just like negative, mm -hmm. like constantly, there's a certain, like, I'm like, I, I just can't, like, that's a very big thing. And me, I'm like, people are nice. Like, I need people that are like friendly people, like nice people. Now again, friendly is different. There's different levels of friendliness. Like mm -hmm. people would say like, I'm not friendly. Like I'm friendly, mm -hmm. but when they're friends with me, they're like, you're not friendly. friendly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, no, but like, I need, because I feel like that just helps equip the other areas that I, I, I lack in because mm -hmm. it's, again, it shows a sense of just like humility to me. It's yeah. like, if you're friendly, you're friendly to others, like you don't, you don't hold anything. It's, it's like, it doesn't pay you to share or to do this and that. I feel like that goes way further. Yeah. Um, and then I think just like being able to, what is it? Um, like empathize, um, what is it? Empathize. 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 Yeah, empathize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Empathize. My English is somehow awesome. empathy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Have empathy. Um, mm -hmm. And again, most of the stuff I'm saying is because growing up, I felt like I didn't really have the people around me that just were those core qualities. So the older yeah. I get, the foundation, the true foundation around me, those people have those in their own ways. Yeah. Like you don't necessarily have to be like outwardly friendly. But in, in our circle, you are like, you are friendly. Like you, mm -hmm. there's something that you bring that to the table. Um, Cause you know, again, depending on how any of your friends, how they depict to others, um, they can be like, okay, like Shay, he's like the nicest guy I know. But someone else would be like, boy, what are you saying? Like, yeah. you know, like that. but it's just like, but your niceness is what feeds them. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, cause yeah. it's different. Um, but yeah, and then also something that's very like important, which we were talking about earlier is, um, somebody that's probably like, you know, like if you went through something, like they gonna be there. Even if they don't necessarily understand, they, there's something that they've, they've experienced like, you know, okay, I can rely on them. I can do this. If, yeah. not like, cause I'm someone that, I'm not gonna lie, I will try and do something a hundred times over before asking my friend. Yeah. And like most of my friends, I'm not asking you for nothing. I'm not, yeah. but in the slim chance I do, I feel like all my friends, I could, I could ask them for something. Yeah. And I feel like that's a part of what makes them my friend, like subconsciously in me, because I feel like there's a certain mm -hmm. type of intimacy that I have and trust that I have with them that mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, if I didn't think that, we wouldn't be, like, I, mm -hmm. I generally think we wouldn't be friends. Like, yeah. you may think we're friends, but I don't think we'd yeah. be our friends. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I can, that kind of dives deep into like a different layer. And then it kind of um, talks about also like 
what would y'all say about like, you know, um, people that need to like embrace change and stuff like that? Like what is like, what is something with the dynamics of your friendships? Like, do they need to like, because mm-hmm. um, obviously we ourselves have not been the same person our whole lives. Like we've consistently been changing and evolving. You're trying to be a better person. Um, how would you say that would go? Um, yeah, which is the dynamics of your friendships and the growth between all of them, relationally and just platonically. Well, I think mine, I, I think it's a little different because I truly, like my friends are literally like family. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's not like, oh, that's my sis. I don't, I don't do that. Like yeah, yeah. literally, if you look at my friends today, like my true core, they're the friends I've had for years. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I, I have new friends in that like people that are new, but like my core is the same and they've changed over time. But how I go into those friendships, those, those core ones, it's like, I'm loving you through whoever you're evolving into. Yeah. Now, are there seasons where there might be distance? Absolutely. But mm-hmm. unless it's a true, you've become the, something that's overtaken you and you're just, there's no remnants of who you are or who I knew you to be yeah. or who I knew yeah. you to become. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm open to who you, who you can evolve into. Mm-hmm. And I also give people the permission that I give myself. Mm-hmm. So like I've given myself permission to not like the same things yeah. or to make a choice to not be how I was or X, Y, and Z over time. Like, yeah. like you were saying, the person you were your freshman year of college, the person you were, you know, your senior year of college, the person you are today can be three different people. Yeah. And I've given myself permission to do that. Mm-hmm. So I do the same because to me in loving someone, whether romantic or platonic or accepting someone for who they are, you give them that permission to do the same thing. Yeah. Um, and then again, you have your own finish lines of, where does the grace end and where does it not? Because some yeah, people, yeah. it's like, I'm going here and you're just like, we're growing in different directions. Yeah. And I think there's discernment with that, whether it's through faith or whether it's through you writing pros and cons. Yeah, yeah. Um, but with that grace in mind, it's it's embracing. I think that comes with it uh, yeah. for me yeah. anyways. Yeah, no, I agree. What about you? What do you say? Yeah, um, I really like that you said that because I've... You know, I have a very close friend who, you know, I was going through a really difficult time. Like it was like our busy season at work and it's one month straight of, you know, just working, you know. So I remember I wasn't fully present at a a specific moment in our friendship during that period. And whenever I got my act together, I called her and I was so apologetic. I was like, I'm so sorry that I didn't do this. And da 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 da. I was, I'm an overthinker. So I was rambling and rambling and rambling and she cut me off. And she was like, honestly, I don't even apologize because when I didn't hear from you, I said to myself, I know something had to have happened, you know? And that's important to surround yourself with somebody who knows you, you know, who knows you so well that it's like, even though this change is happening in her life, she might be going through a really rough time. Work might be demanding more from her. She might be having a really hard time with family. I know this person. I know this person so well. And that's, you have to take the responsibility on yourself to, if you care about your friend, you need to tell them who you are. Yeah. You need to show them that they have to have witnessed it for them to know that I can rely on this person. I know who this person is. And if something happens contrary to the idea or the picture that I have of this person, right? Because I know who she is, I know that, okay, this, this, is, not, this is not something that I should be worried about. It's mm-hmm. just the season. It's just the demands that have been placed on her. Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, I, I think that's, um, that's a problem. I feel like a lot of people really, I feel like we just get stuck in a, our seasons. Like, and again, like what I said earlier, I feel like, Everyone is doing something. something. Mm-hmm. They're doing something. Yeah. And yeah. before you know it, like, time just be moving. So I feel like in the substance of, like, a found it, like a friendship or a relationship, um, really just understanding, like, okay, this is what I need. This is what this person needs. How can I benefit them? And how can they benefit me? Um, and a lot of times I feel like, okay, we know, we understand that they're benefiting us. But because we're getting fed, I don't think we realize, like, oh, like, they also probably needs to be fed just as much. Yeah. But what we think we're giving is not exactly how we're, how much we're giving. Yeah. Um, what would you say on that, I guess, Shay? Honestly, I think change is a very like underrated topic when it comes to friendships or 
you know, romantic relationships. Um, Just from a perspective, like, from my perspective, because, for example, me, um, I wasn't born here. I wasn't raised here. So I think maybe, I can't even remember how old I was now, but maybe at the age of 16, I moved from London to here. And I had to say, I had the same friends. Like I, like my friends are still the same till today, the ones I had in London. But um, we, we saw each other every single day. So we never had needed to be on the phone. Yeah. We never needed to text or nothing. We actually yeah. never needed any of that. Yeah. Cause I'd literally see them every single day, even from morning till night, I'll see them. And then in the night, well, there's, there's literally no point even talking to them on the phone at that point. Cause you know what I'm saying? I see, and I see them on the weekends too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, but then when I moved, it was like, it was almost like it was very different. It was a very different dynamic. Yeah. And it's almost like, how do you navigate that? But it used to be sometimes I'll call them, like, and obviously I was the one that was by myself. They were still together. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It used to be sometimes I'll call them and they're like, obviously don't have time for me. And that used to hurt, that, yeah. that actually used to hurt me a lot mm-hmm. because it was like, bro, like, you know what I'm saying? But now that I'm older and I think back on it, because we're actually still friends today. Yeah. Now that I'm older and I think back on it, I'm like, damn, like, we were just going through our change. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people don't actually survive that change. That's Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Especially yeah. in a circus. A lot of people sure. don't survive it. You know? Like, we, we never spoke about it. Like, you know what I'm saying? We never, we literally never spoke about it. I, I think just as we got older, it just got better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and we literally even, like, we've been friends for what now? Like, 15 years. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, literally the same friends that, I'll, maybe for like, Two or three years, I could barely get them on the phone for five minutes. Sheesh. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Like I could, I could barely get them on the phone for five minutes, but no, but I still consider them like my bestest friends in the yeah. world. You've met them, like yeah. we're the same people. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So like I feel like it's a very under like underestimated topic. Like and we have to know how to navigate those things and know understand the value of our friendships. Yeah. Like yeah. is it worth you know what I'm saying? Putting in that extra effort, especially yeah. now that we're mature as well. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So and romantically as well, I've, like. You know, marriage, like, it, things change on, the, on a daily basis. Yeah. Like, every things are always constantly changing. Yeah. Like, now, I have a child now. Like, it, it changes literally everything. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like now that I'm in a marriage, like, I see why marriages break. Yeah. I, 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 get, I know why. I don't want to, like, I don't want to say, like, I get it. Like, that would never be my portion. But I, I know why marriages break. Do you get what I'm saying? Because most people can't handle change. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, that's that's right. the only thing that's constant in our life is change. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? I feel like, for me, the only reason why I'm able to handle change is because, I mean, like, I like I moved countries. There's not, there's not going to be more change than that for me. <laughs> for me so, like, if I, if I can take that, then I can literally take anything. That's yeah. literally how I think, like, well, I can literally take anything. Like, my wife tells me all the time, like, one thing about me, I'll, I, like, I adapt very quickly. It doesn't, I don't like it. Yeah. I don't like change at all, but, but I, I adapt to things very, very easily. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's something as we get into our, uh, our adult life, you know, because think about it now, we're in a place where bro, we got to go to work, we go to jobs and stuff like that. We can't even, look, we can't even handle our, our change in our friendships, but we want to handle change in our workplace. <laughs> Come on, bro. Is it, is it, like, bro it's, it's, seriously, nah, it's real talk, yeah, man. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, people that are working in corporate America, but things change all the time. Your manager, yeah, boom, that's boom, fire, boom, boom, yeah. new manager, da, 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 new team, da, 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 da. Like, people can't, a lot of people can't keep up with it, but they don't, not people are not understanding the, the importance of it. And it starts from the small things, like, yeah. how do we handle change in our friendships? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do we handle change in our relationships? And that translates yeah. to other things, so. Yeah, no, nah, I definitely, I definitely agree. And then I guess to kind of piggyback off of change, like, so what would you say in terms of like mental health wise, like in terms of like, you know, mm-hmm. people ch- like dynamics and stuff change. Yeah. You're always going through something. People's yeah. mental health change. There's seasons yeah. that you're great. There's seasons that you're not. Yeah. Um, How would you essentially like, uh, I don't know, kind of stand firm with, let's say a partner or your yeah. friend in spaces where they're not 100% themselves. And um, yeah, Watson, well, you can speak on that. Yeah, uh, I'll speak on um, how I would handle it if I was the one who was going through change. Like Mm. my mental health was like, you know, deteriorating or I'm going through a really hard time. Mm. I know that, you know, sometimes it can be so hard that it wouldn't even occur to you to tell your friend, this is what I'm going through. But I do think that communication is important. Mm. Mm. So so Because how can I expect my friend to be there for me? If I didn't tell them what I was going through, yeah. you know, so that's number one on my list. Even if all I have to do is, hey, I'm going through a really hard time right now. So 
I'm not going to be able to pick up your calls for a week. Just give me some time. That's more than enough. Yeah, At least your true. friend knows, oh, she's not just ignoring me. Yeah. She's not just hanging out with other people and not me. She just needs some time. She yeah. just needs some space. She's going through a really hard time. So, yeah, communication. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think, though, with that ask of communication, I think we have to be open to it not going in our favor. Because the response mm. may be, I can't be around you right now. <laughs> yeah. But like being able to understand like, it's not me. I suck. I'm the worst person in the yeah. world. Like being able to accept like, oh, that's the reality to this person. Yeah. I just like, I'm not who they want to support or be around at this time. Yeah. Uh, but I think that's an even broader thing of like, in general, as people, I don't think that we truly walk around enough acknowledging the, the like us being in the wrong or being in the negative yes, light yes. or us not hearing what we want and it being our fault. Yes. So I think in embracing the change, understanding one, that you could be the problem and understanding two, like you just may not get what you want from them. And like, that yeah. just may be, they just may not be the same. Yeah. Oh, or like, God, and, and right. that's, that's just yeah. it. Yeah. That's and nice. like, you're just not going to get it. So what are you going to do? Yeah. yeah. Like, and, and the narrative can't be, well, they change and they, whatever, they just evolved and you were just not part of that evolution. Like yeah. you weren't, you weren't the positive part of, you weren't the, what they want to keep as yeah. they evolve yeah. Yeah, and they have real. the right to do that. And like, that's okay. Yeah, that's real. No, that's so. That's that's actually so so real. <laughs> oh, that, that, like that's the realest thing because it, in relationships we we tend to uh, internalize things a lot. Yeah. Yeah. When stuff is said to us, oh my god, it's neither. You know what I mean? But we don't we don't uh, empathize and you know see things from someone else's perspective. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, what does that what does that person think? And obviously, I'll just speak on the like more on the romantic side of a relationship in terms of that with mental health. To me, uh, communication is very important. Like. Most of the like, if you don't get things off your chest, man, it, it, it's very hard to it's very hard to deal with. We internalize it. We start thinking different different things. You get what I'm saying? Like we have to, you have to speak. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You have to speak. Like, like my wife knows. Like one thing about me is that like, I like I I me I'm not the type of person where I need a therapist. I just give me ten minutes. I just need to I need to say this thing to you. You don't even have to respond. Yeah. Let me just say this thing to you. Get it off my chest. I'm good. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I'm good to go. That's what I mean. I just need to get that thing off my body. I need to get that thing off my body. It doesn't yeah. even matter, bro. Like, I don't yeah. even care. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, and relationship-wise, like one thing I, I appreciate that I do in my marriage is that like we go out a lot and we we um we analyze our relationship a lot. And where we speak, okay, what do you like? What don't you like? What am I doing that's bad? How can I help you? You know what I'm saying? We ask those questions yeah. a lot. You know what I'm saying? So like, and I feel like also going back to like, let's make it normal to ask our friends, ask our partners, you know, are you okay? Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, are you all right? There's one friend that I have, um, you know, he's, he's in the UK and he always asks me and I, he says like, bro, like, are you okay? Like, you know what I'm saying? Because he, he knows that a lot is changing in my life right now. And I actually had to appreciate, I didn't even answer the question. I was like, bro, do you know what, bro? Like, that means the world. Like, I'm actually good for the simple fact that you asked me that. You know what I'm saying? That actually means the world to me. Yeah. That you just text me. I was like, are you okay? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like we have to normalize that in our different relationships to, you know, for, you know, mental health, pur for mental health purposes. You know what, yeah. what I'm saying? Like, bro, people, like, depression is real, bro. Yeah. yeah. Things change, bro, and like people get depressed, bro. People get fired, bro. It's nice. real. Yeah. yeah. And people get depressed. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Like, my wife just had a baby. Um, postpartum depression is real. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I have to talk to her and make sure that she's okay every step of the way to, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? To make sure she doesn't fall into that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Communication is literally, it's, yeah. it's everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We can't do, like, how are we supposed to function if we don't talk? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. people just holding stuff in holding stuff in, holding stuff in, and they can never let it go because it's literally just in there. Yeah. yeah. No, I definitely, I definitely think, and I feel like with you, you have to keep in mind, like, I feel like you get it. Like, I feel like you get it. I feel like you understand. There's a lot of people that don't necessarily, and it's not that they won't eventually, but I feel like you understand it. You've gone through stuff to where like, okay, I have to communicate effectively. I feel like we've probably dealt with people that have not. I understand it. 
It don't mean I'm. It don't mean I'm perfect at doing it. For sure. It. You know what I'm saying? For sure. I, I'll be the first to say that I'm not the. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is more of like a reflection. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not gonna lie to you, man. I internalize things yeah. too, so I, just as we all do, for yeah. sure, yeah. man. But I, and I feel like a lot of people do, but I feel like some people don't even get to the stage that like you've gotten. Like I'm saying yeah, this yeah, even yeah. from myself. Like in the last, I don't know, years, I've had to come to terms. Like, dang, like, bro, you don't talk. Mm. And I always tell people like. What you see on the outside is not necessarily what it really is. You know what I'm saying? Like, for instance, I just, I know a lot of people. Ever since I was younger, I've known a, a good amount of people. Yeah. In my dynamic, most of my friends come to me about their stuff. So I take in their stuff and I try to, like, help them, whatever. Yeah. In that space, I'm like, dang, like, all right, like, whatever. Like, so I just got used to just dealing with stuff, like, internally. So it's not until, like, I got into, like, you know, relationship or, like, just certain dynamics with my friends. So I was like, dang, bro, like, you don't even, like, say anything. And, like, with me is, I won't lie, I'm, like, what I said earlier, I'm comfortable with not saying nothing. nothing yeah, no, Like, nothing. Mm-hmm. But I've realized, like, it's really doing me a disservice. Mm-hmm. Like, it's really doing me a disservice. And there's some people that know it's a disservice and they're not willing to, like, even, like, work on it, though. Yeah, no Like, facts. I've had my friends have to tell me, like, bro, you know how you have to talk. And usually, yeah. like, they know, because it gets to the point, like, it'll, it'll weigh on me. It'll Because yeah. I've been depressed, like, I think like two, three times. Like yeah. I know when I'm about to go there now. Yeah. But like, bro, do you think you would talk more if somebody asked you? Or yeah, you think, eventually, because it's like it's like. But do you think so? You are, do you mean that someone will have to ask you multiple times? Probably, because I, okay. I know how I am. It's like yeah, I understand. Even if I don't necessarily want to talk, it's like I always tell people if you ask, depending on when you ask, is what when, you're gonna get. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, 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 yeah. mm-hmm. I could really be locked in on some like. I'm not saying nothing. Yeah, not the, you're yeah. not, you're, and I'm not lying to me. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get anything out of me until yeah. if you just get me in a position, I'm like, okay, then I yeah. just say it. Um, and that's just because bro, I've just always internalized everything. Like, yeah. growing up, parents, I'm the oldest sibling. I'm in the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. oldest and then my siblings. So it's like, Go my siblings, sure siblings tell me. Yeah. Yeah. My parents tell me. Yeah. I'm not telling anybody. Facts. Mm-hmm. So then I went to college. I met a lot of people. They're like, oh, like, you know, you're a good listener. Yeah, they yeah, tell yeah. me everything. Yeah. <laughs> I don't tell anybody anything. Nothing, yeah. So I just get used to like internalizing stuff. And mm-hmm. the reason why I'm comfortable because it's worked. It hasn't really worked, but it's worked. Like I've gotten through yeah. the phases and so it's like, oh, I can do You this. are where you are now. Yeah, exactly. Right exactly. Now, yeah. But the older I get, I'm like, dang, like, sometimes like you just have to like get it. And I'm yeah. also I'm like, bro, I think everybody needs like therapy. I think it's it's good for yeah. everyone. I think expressing yourself definitely has its advantages. Yeah. And I've obviously learned to like get better at that. Um, but yeah, that's definitely what I would say in terms of like. I low key feel like we, we've we've kind of had that moment too, low key. Yeah, bro. Where like you had your situation like, and like we spoke about it. <laughs> yeah, I actually like, remember that. And like I kind of got on you. I was like, bro, like what the hell, like you know what I'm saying? How can you be dealing with this? And yeah. You don't tell me. And that's what I'm not gonna lie. That's what I I need to change that. That's something about me and my friends. Like if my, I find out my friends are going through something, I get I get angry, bro. Yeah. I like I literally get pissed off. I'm like, bro, why didn't you tell me, bro? Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? I would have been able, like you know what I'm saying, yeah. to do something, but. Then again, also on the flip side of it, I came out of that conversation like realizing, bro, I should just ask this guy if he was okay. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah. I should have just asked him that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What if, I, what if I had actually asked him that and he probably would have just told me? You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. He probably would have just told me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I mean, and those are the things that we can definitely like improve on to help our own mental health and also our friends' yeah. mental yeah. health as well. So, yeah, I kind of see it like like an iOS update. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah. It's like communication is kind of like that. You know, when they say there's an update, there's a whole description about what to expect yeah. in this new in this yeah. new update. You know, that's what yeah. I kind of how I see communication yeah. when you communicate with people. It's like this is who I am right now. This yeah. is what I'm dealing with. Can you handle it? Can you stomach it? You know, and I feel like on the flip side as well, when friends don't share or don't communicate and don't tell you, I think the only thing that I would hope that everyone pays attention to is for the person who doesn't communicate, don't ever feel like, regardless of whether the friend checked on you, if you didn't tell the friend, this is what I'm going through, I don't think you can hold them to not being there. Yeah. Because you don't know what they were going through either. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. yeah. I'm not, I'm going to have to just say that. I can definitely, like, relate to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because there's definitely seasons I'm like, bro, I definitely expect more from so-and-so and so. And And I just really assume, like, y'all should, y'all know me, so y'all know I'm not, y'all know I'm not good. 
So yeah. why don't y'all like? I don't. I feel like I shouldn't mm. have to tell you. No, my, my wife is very good at that, bro. Yeah. She be telling me, bro, you need to tell your, bro, you need to tell your friend you need. This. I'm like, bro, <laughs> like, like, she's very good at that, bro. Like I think, and I think it's a good trait to kind of have. Like yeah. you got a friend, and if that friend is like that with you, you should be able to demand certain yeah. things from that friend. That's yeah. what I thought. If that friend, if you lot are like that, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You got, hey, bro, like you don't call me, bro. Yeah, facts. Like what the hell? Like call me more. Yeah. What are you doing? You yeah. know what yeah. I'm saying? You don't exactly. even text me. Like what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got to be able to d- demand stuff like that from, from your friends because you helping yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like you're yeah. helping your own mentors too. Right. And like, if that's a good friend, that friend will be like, do you know what? You're right. Like I will actually call you more. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I have two things. One, I feel like Like, I am the friend to people that I need. And so for me, I, how am I going to say this? Like, I am the example of what I need from people. Yes. So like, with my friends, I am very open and clear. And I'm very, this is where I'm at. This is what I need. This is where I'm spiraling. This is, but I I also, over time, have taken a lot of time to be able to articulate exactly what what I'm experiencing. To where I'm going to tell you period. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, but it's just created a culture with the people that are closest to me. If you're not somebody who will ask me or care, or if I do it to you, you can't do it back. Uh, you know, know your place. Yeah. Yeah. Like, or you will naturally just move into a place where, okay, we're not the friends yeah. that do that. So we're really not friends for real. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we're acquaintances. Yeah. yeah. Um, so for me, I tell them, this is what I need X, Y, and Z. But also, um, I think I'm only willing to educate somebody on what I need and communicate that if you're worth it enough. Yeah. Like you find that, value in that. Yeah, yeah, I find value in that. So yeah. my expectations correlate to your value. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like the one friend who we just sent Instagram memes mm-hmm. to each other, I don't really need to tell you that I was going through stuff and you should have called me. Yeah. No, my expectation that. is on at this round table that I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. The person that's sitting here, here and here I told y'all this where y'all at. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to add those yeah. uh, add those two pieces in, or no, those two bits in there. That's good. I think like for me too as well. I'm kind of working on. I think I am the friend um, that I would want someone to be to me, but I think I'm working on trying to be the friend that that person needs, not the friend that I that I need yeah. to them. Yeah, do you get good. what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Like I feel like <laughs> because I, I don't need much. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? So, yeah. And there's people yeah. that need much, man. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. I don't need much. And sometimes yeah. the lines get blurred. It's like, oh my gosh, like yeah. this, bro, this person needs more than what I need. Do you yeah, know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like I've I've learned that in my marriage. Like I told my wife like one time like, oh I I feel like I actually treat you the way I would like to be treated. Yeah. But I, I I need to treat you the way you want to be treated, yeah, not yeah, the way yeah, I want to be treated. Yeah. Do you get that's what I'm saying? Good. And it is yeah, very, good. very different. That's, that's so, good. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty similar to me. Like, I'm not the type of friend that needs a lot, yeah. but I know that I have friends that need, need that. A lot. Yeah. You know, so you just have to be sensitive. Like, yeah. I'm, I don't want to give my friend what I want, you know, but I want to give them what they, they want, want yeah. you know, and you have to be sensitive. If, if they communicate that to you, you know, just like Justin said, you know me, bro, yeah, yeah. you know me, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know if you, if they're really your friends, you should know them. Yeah. This person needs this, yeah. you know, yeah. this person. Okay. Some people are very sensitive. Like, okay. When they, when big things happen, they want you to be there to celebrate. They want a gift. They want a heartfelt message. I may not be that type of person. Like I'm happy on my own. This great yeah. thing happened and I'm fine, you know, but then there are some people who are like, I really need this. Yeah, this is yeah. the kind of, yeah. I want to see you by my side when I'm celebrating, you know? So yeah. you just have to be sensitive and give your friends what they need. Yeah. yeah. And let me yeah. let me add context to that. <laughs> so what I mean be the friend that I want, I mean in the general fundamentals of, I need us to communicate. I need this to be, I need to feel safe with you yeah. to be able to be myself and feel accepted. Like all of those things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just I'm glad that you brought this up. <laughs> um, because I I <laughs> this is a concept that I've like sat on experience and been exposed to a lot of like this kind of goes back to the people may view me in a way that I don't view them mm-hmm. because what they're giving me may be their all but the the composition of your all is not actually like what I need yeah, yeah. so like thank you so much for like telling me happy birthday and like uh, showing up in X, Y, and Z, but like I need somebody to speak life into me in a certain way that I can hear. I need somebody to understand that like 
God is not an option. Like mm-hmm. it, that, like my faith ties into every decision in my way of thinking. I need you to be able to, to speak to that. I yeah. need you to know, like, when I call you, I need you to give me the space to just let it out, not yeah. to try and tell me what you think I should do. Yeah. So, like, I think in, in, in understanding my friends, I need to understand, again, like, you just attribute weight to the different things that they give yeah. and yeah. what you give and just also make sure that that exchange is a ratio that you are comfortable with. Because yeah, right. sometimes you might be giving the 100% to that person that they need, which is why they think you're a best friend and they're only giving you 20. Yeah. But are you comfortable that's with real. that? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But then that's also part of like when you vet them, like mm. <laughs> figure yeah. those things out. Yeah, yeah. Facts. You know, like you said, when you move to a different country, proximity could have broke everything because you yeah. could have realized, wait, these people ain't even in, that, like yeah. there's yeah. nothing there. Yeah. But like in as y'all build y'all's relationship and that connection, like there were things that actually have weight that y'all give each other yeah. that main, that helps maintain the relationship over an ocean, yeah. you know? So, yeah. Yeah, nah, that was, that was deep, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I feel like I was unpacking some stuff. <laughs> 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 I'm not gonna lie, um, cause y'all, everything y'all said, I'm, I'm, weeping, I'm like, dang, like, this year just started, but like, there's still work for me to do. There's still work for you know others to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess just to cap it off, um, just one question. So, would you allow your child to date someone like you at this stage of your life right now? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. I love my daughter to be with someone like me. Yeah. What? Are you joking? Definitely. Right now, like, way I am now and yeah. the way I think. Yeah, for sure. Hundred percent. I would say absolutely because I think I'm great. I would marry myself. I'd be my best friend. And I'd be my son but I, I would say it would depend on how my son is because as great as I think I am, I think I'm an asset. I also, <laughs> but I also understand that there are nuances of who I am mm-hmm. and where my strengths are and mm-hmm. where my strengths that are not as strong are. Yeah. And like, I am not the girl for everybody. Yeah. So if my son's a certain kind of guy, absolutely be with me. <laughs> but if my son is somebody who maybe, you know, maybe he took after his dad or, you know, somebody like that. <laughs> then, no, okay. Crazy, <laughs> oh, no, but no, overall, like, I think today who I am, I would love for my son, Jason, to marry me. Yeah, sure. I'm not sure. I would say yes, but, you know, yes, I would love my mm-hmm. son to date someone like me, but not because I think that I'm perfect or anything mm-hmm. like that, but because I'm working towards constantly working yeah. towards perfection, you know, because and it takes humility, knowing that I'm not a perfect person yeah. and allowing somebody to see that vulnerability yeah. will take us a long way, yeah. you know, no, no, for them right. to know she knows she's struggling. Mm-hmm. Like she's telling me this is something I'm trying to improve mm-hmm. on. You know, and then we can work on it together. Yeah, yeah that's so. Yes, I would. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm not lie. You kind of stole what I was about to say. So, <laughs> so it's another that I'm following you right after. But yeah, I, I definitely think if I had a daughter, I'd be like, hey, she's talking to a guy that's like, I'm like, hey, go ahead and lock him down. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um, but <laughs> um, in the aspect of like now, if maybe said this like three years ago, like probably not. But the main reason is because. I feel like there's a season that like God brought me to where like I was essentially like ground zero. Mm-hmm. Like, and um, there was a certain type of like refining and stuff that like I didn't know I needed until I was in that season. Yeah. And I feel like it it renewed me, like it made me see life like in a different like way. Yeah. Like what we were talking about earlier is like there's certain experiences that you go through that make you like who you are. And I don't want anyone to see me and be like, oh, like I have everything just Beautiful. because yeah. I don't. But I do know that hey, if there's something that we need to get, or there's somewhere I'm trying to get, I'm gonna get it, or I'm gonna go there, and um, and we don't have to do anything like uh, what is it like something that is like it would, it would go? How can I put it? In terms of the understanding, like we're gonna just work through it and get get to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like we have a certain notion of like we have an expectancy of tomorrow, like right. And I feel like me being in this, the season I was in, like, I realized, like, bro, I literally cannot be here tomorrow. Like, literally. So it just made everything, relationship, friendship, that much more purposeful. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like in friends and in family, like, 
realizing the purpose behind something or someone having a certain purpose of knowing like, hey, this is life today. Yeah. Yeah. And going through life that way, there's something about a person like that. And yeah. so, and it's not, I'm not even saying it to, for people to feel sorry for me or anything like that. It's just like, there's something about when you see someone like, dang, like, okay, they don't have it right now, gonna, but you bet they going to get it. Yeah. <laughs> they going to get it. You know what I mean? And sometimes it just takes a certain season, a certain space um, for you to like find that out in you and sometimes in your partner. Um, just kind of depends on if that person um, is willing to see it through. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. So that's how I cap it off. It's a relationship series, friendship series. I hope y'all gained something. I hope, you know, y'all had some sort of impact in this. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs>